Um, so thank you so much for joining us in the morning here. I know a lot of, uh, a lot of us had a late evening, um, so I appreciate you coming here and joining us. We wanted to uh, continue the conversation about India for those of you joining us from the uh, India breakfast. Um, and we wanted to talk about India as a marketplace for tomorrow through the lens of fashion. You know, fashion can often be a leading indicator of the trends that happen in a society. And that's actually what we know uh, about India. That's what our area of expertise. So we'll be telling you a bit about our personal stories. Uh, as Arthur pointed out, Lisa is a top model and actress in Bollywood. And I am a uh, internet entrepreneur uh, starting a fashion brand in India. And I'm also the first uh, Sikh model in the world. So, I wanted to talk first about India as a marketplace. Um, you know, you can look at India in, as a market in different segments because it's very hard to just take India as one consumer. Um, and each of these market segments themselves are huge opportunities. Uh, for us, the most relevant market segment is really the emerging middle class. And that's the uh, upcoming, the upwardly mobile young Indian who lives in a tier one, tier two, tier three city. Um, they've grown up in an increasingly international environment. They're a byproduct of um, the high growth in the service industries from IT companies like Wipro and Emphasis to BPO offices. And um, now over the last two years, this young customer has moved, uh, has been able to look at not just purchasing products based on need, but purchasing products based on disposable income. And this is the right opportunity for a brand to engage with consumers. But if you look at the Indian marketplace today, there are no aspirational brands in the marketplace from India. This consumer increasingly has to look to foreign brands to find things that represent. And foreign brands in India today represent um, quality, they re represent aspiration, and they represent an upwardly mobile lifestyle. But with any brand, why do people engage? They engage because the brand is something that they can relate to or aspire to. And this is the opportunity that we're looking at for Share Singh. Uh, we want to create a brand for India, for a global marketplace that has all of the quality and aspirational elements that consumers look to in a foreign brand, but with the authentic Indian relatableness uh, that has been lacking in the marketplace. So that's what we believe is the opportunity. The opportunity is really a tremendous one as we think about it. Um, as an e-commerce business, uh, we are in the low cost center of production. A huge percentage of the world's clothes are made in India. Um, as an e-commerce business, we don't have the e uh, tremendous amount of retail infrastructure costs that a traditional brand like a Tommy Hilfiger or Ralph Lauren might have. And currently today, there's an explosive growth in social media uh, engagement in India. So we're able to more quickly and engagingly tell a brand story. So for example, over the last three or four months, in our first three or four months of launch, we had over 300,000 fans engage with our brand online in India. So this is a really disruptive opportunity, not just in India, but in the global marketplace. Uh, we think that um, this new model might disrupt the future of fashion in the world. Um, marrying the uh, cost efficiencies of the emerging marketplace with the global sophistication uh, of a brand. So Lisa, let's talk practically about what consumers in India want related to fashion. Uh, you're a top model in India. So sure. why do you think consumers connect with you? I think actually what consumers are connecting with, Indians these days seem to actually view themselves as being global citizens. And uh, what that means for me is that when they look at an ad campaign, I don't think that essentially they're looking at me, for example, as being a model, but they're looking at an entire image. And what does that image and that campaign mean for themselves? Um, what this leads me to believe is that what they find commercially viable right now in the marketplace is something that looks Indian, but yet has an international sentiment or lifestyle attached to it. Something global mixed with something authentic. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a good point. I think as um, someone who's half Indian and, and half Australian, you, you can represent both 
something that an Indian can relate to as well as something that's aspirational um, and that they associate with aspirational, that's something international. Sure. Um, I know uh, for me, uh, the, my life changed when um, after September 11th in the United States. Um, and there was a tremendous amount of backlash and uh, fear of, of turbans. Um, and so Kenneth Cole created a global campaign for their 25th anniversary um, with the idea of changing, of putting someone who was wearing a turban in a major fashion campaign. And the idea was to change how people in America look at people uh, who wear turbans. But what we found was it had an unintentional consequence, actually. Uh, this campaign, even though it only ran in the United States and Europe, created a tremendous amount of uh, attention in India. Um, because what happened was it not only changed how American people looked at Indians and the idea of a, a, of a Sikh person with a turban, but it changed how Sikh people and Indian people themselves looked at opportunities. Indian people are very rarely portrayed in global fashion campaigns. Um, and the idea was, uh, through subsequent campaigns, it was the idea of empowerment, of what can be and how people can change. Um, and that was the first kind of profound insight that we had of an opportunity to really empower people through fashion. This is one of the things that we really hope to do with the Share Sing brand. Well, you know what, on that topic, this is actually why I love working in films and fashion, because I think that film and fashion has a disproportionately massive effect on people and our community because of the emotional response that it tends to create in people. When people watch films, it makes them, it makes them sort of think about themselves. It makes them think about, you know, their society, their culture, the way things are changing, because films are actually responsible for taking our society and culture forward. So that's actually very interesting for me. Yeah, and when we, before we started Cheer Sing, we conducted market research studies uh, in our marketplace in 10 cities all across India. And what we found was consumers really identified, uh, they really wanted, they saw that Western brand as aspirational. So some Indian brands actually create Western names like John Players uh, for what is an Indian brand because they think it represents something that that consumer wants. Um, we decided to launch a brand called Share Sing, which flies right in the face of our market research study. And that's because the most interesting insight that we learned was what was truly exciting to that target marketplace was for a brand to exist that had all of the aspirational and quality elements associated with a foreign brand, but still in a relatable, authentic Indian fashion. So, you know, that's what our goal is with the ShareSing brand, to really not just change how people view India as a fashion market, but also how Indians view uh, India as a fashion marketplace. Okay, so what I've done actually is I've um, I brought some pictures for you all to see today. I actually found it interesting that, you know, these girls are my friends and eight out of ten of the most relevant and in-demand top models in India are actually girls that are Indian, that look Indian, and then are mixed with another culture, say Australian, American, or European. Um, these are some of the fashion images from some of the leading fashion magazines in the world, like Vogue, Elle, etc., but in India. What these pictures represent for me is an image of an Indian person, someone that Indians can relate to, they find it accessible. But the sort of sentiment behind it is something Western and global. So what these images represent is something authentic mixed with something borrowed. And that for them is sort of the future of where these top leading fashion magazines see fashion going now and in the future but towards take, a more global identity. I mean, take a second to think about that, everyone. Um, that was a really powerful insight that I learned uh, as Lisa and I have been uh, talking. Um, <laughs> I don't want you to miss any Keep of the looking. images. Um, but eight out of 10 of the top models in India are half Indian, half foreign. I can't think of another marketplace where that idea is so clearly represented as it is in today's India. Uh, People hire models because they, they know what their consumers want, what their consumers aspire to. Uh, and this is really clearly demonstrating something uh, very specific here. Well, what it, also, what it also showed me was that there is a great theory that the white model is aspirational in an Asian country like India, but this sort of study woke me up to the realization that Indians actually find Indians accessible, and that was very interesting. 
So let's move beyond this idea of, of a global citizen uh, and a specific kind of identity, an Indian yet international identity, and talk about two brands, right? So I was talking yesterday to a friend of mine, and he was responsible for bringing Levi's. He's the MD of Levi's who brought Levi's to India. Levi's is an authentic Indian, uh, American brand. Um, and a lot of American brands have attempted to come into the Indian marketplace. So Levi's is a true success story of market entry. Uh, India is the second largest market globally for Levi's in terms of number of units, and fifth largest market in terms of revenue. So what the, he was telling me the key to Levi's success was really in but maintaining their brand identity, but also focusing on connecting with the Indian marketplace, whether it's product or fit or design or their brand messaging, uh, talking about being upwardly mobile and importantly, how they connect with the consumer and connecting the consumer to part of a larger global marketplace. Um, Let's take a contrasting example of luxury brands in India which have run into some trouble in gaining market traction. Take a brand like Armani. Everybody in India knows that brand and it's very aspirational. But over the past five years, only two Armani stores have opened. Whereas in China, a marketplace that's very different, more than 140 Armani stores have opened, right? So it's because, you know, I think one of the reasons that they think is that because it's hard for the Indian consumer to connect. Uh, you can't take a product and just drop it in uh, there. So, you know, one jewelry store, uh, I know someone was telling me the statistic uh, yesterday, one jewelry store alone in New Delhi, a very specific one, does more revenue annually than the top five luxury brands in India put together. That is, um, this is something I've actually thought about for a long time. You know, it's been only 10 to 12 years since Fashion Week has actually come to India. And what that means essentially is that only 10 to 12 years ago did Western fashion and global fashion get introduced into our culture in India. So before that, we never had luxury shoes or a luxury handbag or a trendy jacket to use as status symbol. Jewelry always stood as being the status symbol of luxury and you know, affluence in India, which is why Indians love their jewelry so much. And um, films as well are also becoming, but you know, even this whole jewelry thing is actually changing for New India as well. Films are actually becoming really relevant in helping Indians realize what it means to be a globally cool, sort of stylish person. In films, we use outfits and costumes to sort of essay personality types and characters. I worked on a film a couple of years ago. It was a film called Aisha, which is a, which is a movie about Jane Austen's book, Emma, which is a very socially relevant story. And what this film did, it was, it was the first Indian film that was a breakthrough film in fashion where we used outfits and, and, and character types to describe personalities. And for the youth in India, this was a very groundbreaking film because it actually got them thinking for the first time what it actually means to be a stylish global citizen, to be globally cool and trendy. Now, I remember when I, uh, when I first moved to India uh, two years ago, uh, Aisha was a big fel film. Mm. And in Delhi, everybody was talking about it, uh, about the, the sense of style, uh, that the characters had and how they were able to mix and match uh, Western outfits with traditional Indian accessories. Uh, the thing that struck me actually was um, how L'Oreal for the first time was actually using product placement in a Bollywood movie. Um, and that was a unique way, a first of actually brands looking at new mediums to connect with, um, to connect with people and young adults. Um, so that was, I thought was a really interesting insight. Yeah. It was a cool film. So, so, um, so I think at the end of the day, what, what we've seen uh, was we spent some time talking about uh, the fashion, uh, the current state of fashion affairs in India is that um, there is an increasing, increasingly global mindset for the young Indian consumer. Uh, so they want, they're looking for foreign brands. Zara is doing well. I hear Abercrombie and Fitch and Gap is coming. Um, and foreign brands are looking at how do they connect with that Indian consumer? Um, because that consumer still has some sense and a strong sense of their own Indian identity. Um, that's really one of the key things that we think will influence uh, how India evolves as a marketplace of tomorrow. That increasing um, balance between uh, India's desire to participate on a global level 
in it finding its own self uh, sense of pride and identity in what it is. Um, thank you very much. I think we're out of time. We want to keep things moving along. Um, and thanks, Lisa, for joining us uh, thank you, at DLD. Everyone. <laughs> thanks. Thank you.